Hey everybody, it's James here from the Sawyer Family Reviews channel. Today is Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020, and this is your weekly comic book pickups video. Every week I buy comic books. I buy them for myself, for my sons, for my daughter. I get them at Queen City Comics in Fairfield, Ohio, zip code 45014. If you're in the area and into comics, check out the shop, and while you're over there, check out the toy department. Yes, True Believers. Uh, these are $1 reprints of classic Marvel tales that are tied into something that's currently going on. So we've got a lot of mutant books lately, so that's tying into both the release of New Mutants and the Exoswords crossover. So we've got two kind of big mutant events right now. Exoswords actually started today, but I didn't buy it because I'm not really a big fan of the House of X status quo anymore. I've gotten kind of tired of that. I like it. I really enjoyed House of X and Powers of Ten as sort of a what-if tale, um, sort of an Elseworlds type of deal. I can really enjoy that on its own but I don't really enjoy it as the new status quo. Uh, so I pick up very few mutant books now. I gave them all a shot, but then I got tired of it pretty quickly. I do have a mutant book in the stack, and I still get Wolverine because I'm always going to get Wolverine. But there we go. Anyway, True Believers. So the $1 reprints today are, first of all, this True Believers number one, Saturn 9, which is a reprint of some, some of the stories from the Marvel Monthly Superheroes magazine from UK. So this is 380 through 383, the Captain Britain stories uh, with art by Alan Davis. So if you're looking for some classic Alan Davis, Captain Britain action, and you only want to spend a dollar on it. Yeah, so here's the original covers for those issues. And there's our creative team, David Thorpe, artist Alan Davis. So there you go. Uh, then there's an Uncanny X-Men reprint here, True Believers number one, The Soul Sword. Welcome to the X-Men Rogue. Hope you survived the experience. An oft-repeated line when it comes to X-Men. And this is a reprint of issue 171. There's your creative team, Chris Claremont, Walt Simonson doing the guest pencils. And this is when Rogue joins the X-Men. Oh, yeah. And we've got the Soul Sword in here. Again, X of Swords. Put those guys over there. Um, Blaze didn't have any new books this week, but he's trying to fill out his Robin collection, so he gave me a list of Robin issues he needs. So I grabbed a few Robin back issues. These are all by Chuck Dixon with um, Johnson on the art. I can't remember what his first name is. But I just grabbed a few random ones here. I got 39, 38. These are Waringo covers. 37 and 36. So I just grabbed him four random back issues of Robin. The Robin series was great. It's a lot of fun, especially for the entire time that Chuck Dixon was writing it. The original three miniseries are really good, especially that first one. So yeah, classic Tim Drake action from DC was awesome. Really fun book. So Gracie asked me for two books when I left this morning. She asked me for another SpongeBob book. So I grabbed her this back issue number 58. It was $3.99. I think the original price was $3.99, so it hasn't really changed but spongebob we're okay i'm barely in it so hopefully that's not true because i'll be disappointed if i get a spongebob book that barely has spongebob in it and then she sent it a ghostbusters issue now we've we've seen this one on the videos before i bought this one it was brand new uh the extreme ghostbusters one shot from idw since so she said ghostbusters i'm like well i gotta get an idw issue of course and she really enjoyed watching extreme ghostbusters with keaton on hulu so i grabbed her this one for 3.99 we've already looked through this before I believe it's uh, Lottie on the art. Who does the writing? Beard Dallas Lottie Delgado. Um, where's your creative team? Where's that creative team at? Here we go. Written by Jim Beard and Keith Dallas and art by Tim Lottie. Yeah, Tim Lottie has some really cool variant covers in a lot of the, ex uh, the uh, Ghostbusters books. He's got his own style while still kind of um, feeling like Extreme Ghostbusters and feeling like it still fits in the IDW Ghostbusters universe, if all that makes sense. So, uh, okay, on to today's books. I grabbed Juggernaut number one. I'm going to give it a shot because I love Juggernaut. And the other reason is, I got the variant cover here. This is $3.99. The other reason is, is I really like the creative team. We've got, um, let's see, nothing can stop the Juggernaut except himself. Another building falls, another building falls. King Marco is done letting others pick up the pieces of the things he has destroyed. So I have no idea what this is going to be about. But I like this creative team. I liked Fabian Nicieza's stuff back in the 90s on the X-Books. And I like Ron Garney as an artist. So I'm a big fan of Ron Garney's old cap run with Mark Wade. 
and some of the stuff he did later on, but that, that's the thing that stands out the most to me. Um, so I'm a big fan of this creative team. I have no idea what state Juggernaut is in at this point in the whole Marvel Universe, but I'm willing to, to give it a shot. What is this? Hey, Professor X, Contest of Champions, okay. Uh, then this one's for Keaton. I think almost all, yeah, the rest of the books are for me and Keaton. Venom number 28, Donnie Cates. Venom Beyond Part 3, 399. Venom book is hot. Uh, Keaton was telling me today that it's, he feels like it's kind of slowed down a bit for him. Like he's, it was like his favorite book, but it's slowed down a bit. So I gave him a list of the three books that were there for him and said, well, is there anything you really want me to keep buying or not buying? He said, I like all three of them, but Venom is definitely slowed down. It's my least, out of those three, it's the one I'm least looking forward to reading. And that's surprising, because so far, Donny Cates' Venom has been like his top book for a long time. So maybe this issue will turn that around for him, but I don't know, we'll see. Uh, then Spider-Man Noir. This is by Stoll and Ferriera, and it is $3.99 as well. I really like the coloring on this book. Hopefully it's the same in this one as the other two have been, where it's got, uh, this is a different artist. I feel like this is a different artist than the last couple. Maybe not, that looks familiar. It might be the same artist, but it's a blend of like black and white with just some reds mixed in. It's like a very muted color palette, but it's supposed to feel like something noir. Supposed to feel like an old black and white movie or something, like an old detective film. He likes this one a lot. And then I grabbed two of these Maestro by Peter David German Perlata Del Kion, one of my favorite Hulk artists. Uh, this is The Tale of Maestro, which is the future version of Hulk, where he's the only one left. Um, it spins out of Hulk Future and Perfect. So this is kind of the origin of the Maestro Hulk. I grabbed the first one. I only grabbed one of it, and Keaton ended up really digging it, so I let him keep it. Um, I've got to now go back and get an issue one for myself, though. So, And that is it for this week. We got Maestro, we got Venom, Spider-Man Noir, and Juggernaut as new books, The True Believers, and then a bunch of back issues. I don't know what you picked up today, so if you want to leave it a comment down below and let me know. If you don't want to, that's fine, too. If you enjoy the videos, like, subscribe, notify. Uh, talk to you guys next week. See you. Bye.